Hello everyone. I hope you're doing well. I feel like as I like carry on with this with the series, I just start to get weirder and weirder um, locations. Um, but I'm hoping because right now you are um, in my drawer, sitting on a box. Um, so I hope you're okay with that. Um, I'm feeling very tanned as well. Um, so that always helps, isn't it? Um, always good. It always feels good when you feel tanned. Um, it takes like until August until I get like really tanned. Um, but it's worth it. It's all worth it, isn't it? It's all worth it. Sometimes you gotta get a little bit burnt before you get tanned. Just not too burnt. And also got a club card today. Sorry, this is like totally like not what I'm wanting to talk about, but I've just got very distracted very quickly. Um, we are gonna carry on with the why series. So we are gonna look at why worship. And have you ever wondered like why we do it? What, what's the definition of it? Where does it come from? And I'm not gonna answer all those questions, but sometimes it's good um, to think about. And I actually looked up um, what it's about. And basically the definition on Google is a feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for a God. And when it says a God, there's only one God and that is Jesus, and that is God who died and rose again. Yes, there is many gods, but there is one God that is is the fulfiller of all brokenness. Um, and I just encourage you to seek him, to lay down everything, to worship him only. Um, I mean, that's very, sometimes very hard to do, but um, yes. But anyways, it's worship is quite big stuff. Like, I forget sometimes the what like not that it's heavy, not that it needs to be heavy, but the joy of it. And it's not just a Sunday thing. Worship is a lifestyle lifestyle. It's a 24-7 thing. You know, worship can be putting on your makeup or driving to work, riding your bike. Whatever connects you most to Jesus, that's worship. And I think it's also no I know it's I know it's an opportunity to thank God for the amazing things that he has done in my life and it also allows me to kind of think to not to not stop thinking about what's going on in my life but to have a grateful heart and to practice that and um to acknowledge all that he's done and it either our worship what we worship either brings us closer to God or further away. And I want to ask to, sh um, to look at this story in the Bible. It's Luke 7. And it's about the woman with the abalaster jar of perfume. When I first when I, when I first read that word, I was like, abalaster? Abalaster. Abalaster. I don't know. But it's Luke 7, verse 36 to 50. And I'm not going to read all of it. Um, but basically, she was a woman who was seen as sinful in the town. And she heard that Jesus was in the town, so she went to go see him. And um, when she went, she she poured this really expensive abalaster jar of perfume on Jesus's feet. And she, her, her hair and all of it, she kissed his feet. She gave all everything to Jesus. And then all the other um, guests, the Pharisees, just began to judge her ask her questions but Jesus loved her and forgave her of her sins and it's just like the most mind-blowing story and I want to ask I want to ask us today are we fully worshipping Jesus wholeheartedly because I know sometimes I don't I get it wrong we all get it wrong sometimes we run to other things instead of running to Jesus sometimes we seek advice in wrong places we're human we all fall short, you know, and, but it's always good to admire things and to look up to things in a healthy way. And um, I love in scripture when it says that she began to wash his feet with her tears. She wiped his feet with her hair, kissing them, anointing them with 
the perfume. This woman definitely worshipped Jesus wholeheartedly and that's why we're looking at it. And I think it's time to let ourselves go as we have too many barriers and it's stopping God from truly, it's stopping God from truly showing us his wonders. Let God speak to you. Let him guide you. Let him hold on to you. He loves you, remember. He loves you so much. What I really admire about this woman is that she, she didn't care about what others thought of her. She was fully, wholeheartedly dedicated to Jesus. And it's funny that when we, when we, fall, when we fall in love with Jesus, we, we tend to become less worrying, um, less freaked out about what others think about us. And I pray that over my life that I will be always fully in love with Jesus wholeheartedly and that I won't care about what others thinking. But I know it's it's so hard, but I'm just going to keep on praying until I get there. I don't think I ever will get there, to be honest, but it's baby steps and it's learning and it's growing and it's learning more about who I am in Jesus and what he thinks of me, what his word says, you know. Um, but it's hard. It's it's so hard. And you know, I think that we forget that we can bring our guilt and our shame that we feel to Jesus' feet. Because that is what he died for. When the world says that you are a sinner, Jesus says, I love you and I forgive you. And I want your life to be life too. Before. And I pray that we will be people who pour our everlasting jar of perfume at Jesus' feet. You know, we've all got stuff. We've all got stuff that we're holding on to. And I don't know, we've all got stuff, things that we need to pour out on Jesus' feet. And I want to ask us today, what do we need to bring to Jesus' feet today? What are we holding on to so that our worship can be more free and more joyful? and more authentic worship worship what being authentic in worship is so important but yeah thank you so much for watching this video and i know that um we're all working out how we can worship jesus but just thought we'd have a little bit of insight and have a little bit of encouragement of worship um you're amazing and i hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and i'll see you very soon